Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be a fairly quick uh, rundown of the uses for views. Um, it's this little tab when you're in your room editor um, at the top called uh, views. And uh, what these are are basically the uh, the camera ports of your game. If you don't have any views set up, um, which by default I don't, and you're creating like a big platform game, for example, um, so like in your your level might be really huge. Um, this one here I've got set up is two five sixty by nine sixty. Uh, without any views set up, when you you go to run the game, you're gonna end up with something like this, where the whole level is uh, being rendered at once, and it's taking your uh, whatever you have in your room size to be the whole resolution of your game, but the room size might want to be bigger than your actual camera resolution. You might want to only say view like a small area at a time, and then like move the player around and have that camera follow the player about. Um, and you would do that using views. Uh, so if I go to this little tab up here called views, um, there's a number of different uses for these as well. You have like uh, not seven, yeah, seven, well eight technically uh, cameras that you can set up. And uh, you can use these for, you can display the multiple cameras at once, so you could do things like uh, multiplayer split screen using these, and um, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, they're really, really useful, so uh, I'm just going to show you guys how to use that in conjunction with how it would normally be used in sort of a plus scrolling platform game. Um, I already have the engine for that kind of set up, just from borrowed code from other projects. Uh, so if I go up here and I just hit enable the use of views on view number zero and visible when room starts. So I've, I've turned views on in the first place so obviously that needs to be turned on. And then visible when room starts, uh, what that does is makes um, this view immediately turned on at the start of the game because you can use code to turn views on and off. Uh, but if you have visible when room starts then, then this one will be enabled right away. Uh, so our first view is enabled and you can see this big box has just appeared uh, in the top left in uh, zero, 0 and it's about a 640 by 480 box which is as you can see the view in room settings over here. If I were to turn this up to something like 1024 uh, you can see the our box has gotten a lot bigger and uh, that's pretty much because I've just changed the, the width of that view to be like 1024 instead of 640. Uh, basically this setting here is what we're going to use as the um, the resolution for the game instead. So, well, no, sorry, uh, the the space that we're actually trying to view, that's what this is. So if I turn this back to 640 by 480, so that, that box represents the area of game space that we're looking at. And then port on screen over here is what I almost said this one was, which is um, the resolution, or the area of the window that you're going to use. It can be very easy, like like I just did, to get these two things mixed up, but the view in the room is the space of your game world that is being contained in the box, and the port on the screen is um, the area of the window that it's taking up, and the very first view you use is basically going to determine, and on the very first room that's loaded, will basically determine the opening resolution of your game. So I mean, if I were to set this to like uh, a smaller value, like 320 by uh, 240, you'll notice our box hasn't changed. But it basically, what it will try and do now, if I run the game, is you can see it's created this tiny 320 by 240 box, and that's our resolution. But it's containing uh, this 640 by 480 area of space inside of it. So yeah, you hopefully now that that clears up kind of the difference between view and room and port on screen. Now um, it's a little bit small on here. I'll probably zoom in on the video, but you'll notice if I walk off the edge of the screen here, you know it's it's not really following a player around. So um, it's a you know it's not really useful to us like this at the moment. We want that camera to sort of follow where our player goes. Um, otherwise, we'd be better off just showing the whole level. Uh, luckily, Game Maker makes this really, really easy for us, um, and a very simple way to set this up. I mean, you can set it up with manual systems if you don't like the way Game Maker handles it, but honestly, I found this little system here to be really, really useful and easy to work with. So, this box here called Object Following is the thing we want to be looking at. Uh, and if we set our object following to be our player object, um, you'll now notice what will happen if I just set this back to be 640 by 480, just so we get a normal sized window. And if I run this, you'll notice if I walk off the edge of the screen, what happens is the camera is now following along. 
Now, this isn't ideally set up at the moment still, because as you notice, we're walking along here, and um, we can't really see what's coming up ahead of it, so like we had no way of seeing the hole there. And um, also, I'm actually walking on a floor here, but we the, the camera hasn't zoomed down far enough for us to see the floor. Like, all the code is literally doing at the moment is um, keeping, making sure that our player object is inside the frame at all times and is moving the frame to keep the player inside it. And if we look down at this bottom corner here, we have two values called uh, h bore and v bore, standing for horizontal border and vertical border. Uh, I think, anyway. Yeah, vertical border to keep the vision, yeah. Okay, so what these mean, they're currently set to 32. So that means it's keeping, if you imagine a second box uh, that is offset from this uh, box by about 32 pixels in each direction, so like, like an internal box that's sort of 32 pixels smaller than this box, basically what the game is doing is now keeping our view um, making sure our view is following this object by keeping this uh, keeping this box um, on top of the player while it's inside that this uh, the horizontal and vertical border so um, if we were to increase well technically decrease the size of this virtual box I'm, I'm sort of explaining it as if I were to set this to something like 128 well that means is it will keep the view um, it's really hard to think of how to explain that in words, but basically when the player gets to 128 pixels away from the edge of this wall, um, that's when the view will start scrolling along with it, if you understand what I mean. So now if I uh, run that with a bigger horizontal border, you'll notice like when I get to here, it starts scrolling as opposed to when I get right to the edge. So if we increase those values by a little bit more, so say we'll do this by 256, and uh, do the bottom by the same, so just 256 either way. You'll notice, like, and you'll notice actually now it scrolled, uh, scrolled down quite a lot as well because it's keeping us within like uh, this this second box that is offset by two five six pixels in each direction. So if I run along here, you'll notice the camera is now following us along a bit. It's following me when I go up and following me when I go down, and so on and so forth. And that's really really useful if you're making a platform game. You can just play about with those values all you like. Uh, one thing you will notice though is like if I leave the bottom of my actual room now, so if I fall off the bottom of here, uh, the camera isn't following me anymore. And um, yeah, that's because a, a view itself cannot actually leave the room that you're in. So that's exactly why that's happening. Uh, these there are two other values here as well. They're not as insanely useful, but they can be. Um, they can be quite useful for s specific situations. Uh, H S P and V S P, um, which standing for horizontal speed and vertical speed. Uh, they're by default set to minus one each. Uh, what that means is, um, basically, these two values represent the maximum speed the uh, the view can move at to keep up with your object. Uh, when it's set to minus one, um, it's just instantly snapping. So like it's it's not got a maximum speed of zero because that would imply it just couldn't move at all. Um, it's got a maximum speed of minus one, um, which is just basically an off button for the horizontal speed and vertical speed feature. And we'll just make sure that the view just snaps to always, always every single frame, just be on wherever the player is at. So um, if we were to set this to something like uh, five and we set the speed to be something like 5 as well and we were to say move our player object over here just to give a good example of how this works you'll notice when the game starts our camera scrolls gently towards it if that was minus 1 it would have just snapped to it straight away but um, another thing actually I should have set this a bit lower just to demonstrate if I set these to both 2 each now our player character moves faster than 2 pixels a frame so once this finally catches up there we go and I start moving you'll notice like it can only move at a maximum of two pixels per frame to catch up so it creates this sort of effect whereby the camera sort of moves after the player as fast as it possibly can based on whatever settings you've given it. Uh, when I fall down here you'll notice the camera is still trying to catch up to me so you know and so on and so forth so I mean that can be really useful depending you know what your game is and how, that, how it's working to to use those settings um, but yeah, that's the very basics of how cameras and views work.